Hi everyone, I'm Tony Florida, a developer advocate for Linode. And in this video, which is part of a larger series, we're going to be integrating a finance API into our Django web application. We will be using the Tingo API to pull in some stock market data for our tickers. You can see here under the documentation tab under the end of day section that we can get metadata for a particular ticker using this URL and latest price data for a particular ticker using this URL. Now we're gonna do each one of these one at a time today in this video, but if you're following along, make sure you get your free API token first, and then we can go ahead and sign into our Linode like we have in the previous videos, SSH in and navigate to the var www Django app directory. And the first thing I'm gonna do here is go into our stocks web app, and I'm gonna make a new file here simply called Tingo. And this is where we're gonna make our API calls. So I'm gonna come over here to my cheat sheet and get some code, and we're gonna paste that in here. And 11 lines of code, let's walk through it one at a time, one line at a time. So we're importing the requests library, a Python library. We're defining a header up here, which has two entries in it, the content type, which is JSON, and the authorization, which contains my API key from Tingo. Now there's one function definition. We're gonna start off with just getting the metadata from Tingo. And this function takes one argument, a ticker symbol. And this first line here on line nine just defines a string, which is a URL containing at the very end, the ticker that we passed in. Now we're gonna take that URL, make a request to the URL passing in the headers, and we're gonna return the response as a JSON to the caller. So let's go ahead and save this file. And let's call this function in our views.py file. So in here, we are going to import the function that we just defined, kind of like we did with the ticker form from a couple videos ago. So from this directory, there's a file called Tingo. Let's import that function called get metadata. And then down here in our ticker definition, just like we did with adding some context for the ticker name itself. Let's go ahead and add another value down here to the context called meta, and that's gonna contain the result of that API function call. Now we're gonna next use this meta field inside of our ticker.html file. And we'll add a couple lines in here. So right now we're just displaying the ticker um, in a header one element. So let's go ahead, instead of doing that, we're gonna instead, um, so we will still display the ticker, but we'll just wrap it around with parentheses here and we'll do the uh, ticker's meta name, which is like the full name of the ticker. So for Apple, for AAPL, it would be Apple. And then we'll also get the description that's associated with that ticker. And we'll prefix that with description colon. So let's, it's, it's really that simple. Let's go ahead and save that file. And if we go back into the root of our project, we can, as usual, do Python 3, manage.py, run server, and then 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0 colon 8001. And right where we left off over here in this other tab, we can go back to our main stocks page, refresh the page, and let's type in, let's start with Apple like we usually do, submit, and now we are pulling in that data. So we got our ticker symbol here in um, parentheses, and then the full name of the company and a description right here, which is looks like to be a few sentences long, a paragraph long about the company. And um, like before, we can also type in directly to the URL another company, let's try Google, and that'll pull in in this case, Alphabet's information and its description. All right, so let's go ahead and do that exact same thing, except this time let's pull in some price data. Now we can check out the API again and look at the URL that we should be calling. And it is pretty much the same thing, except we have ticker followed by prices. So let's go back to our application, navigate to the stocks web app, and inside of the Tingo file, T-I-I-N-G-O, we can add another function definition. This time it's going to be get price data. Very similar to what we have. We're gonna pass in a ticker symbol 
create a URL here that we saw in the API and pass in the ticker symbol to that URL and make a request to that URL, pass in the headers and return the JSON response. Now I was in here before and I know that it returns an array. So I'm just gonna return the first element of that array by indexing into it as zero. So let's save that. And just like before, let's go into the views.py file. And in here we can do two things. We're gonna first go down into our line where we imported the get metadata function and let's import get price data. And then down here, just like we did before with meta, we can add context for the price data. So uh, we have a field called price and we're just gonna associate that with the return value of get price data for the particular ticker ID. One last thing, let's edit the ticker.html file and let's pass in, um, well, there's, there's, a couple different, um, there's a couple different fields in this JSON data structure that we're returning, including open price data, closed price data, high and low. So we're gonna pull out each one of those using the dot syntax. So price.open, price.high, price.low, and price.close. And we'll prefix each one of those with open, high, low, and close. So go ahead and save that. And we can run our server again with Python manage pi run server 0.0.0.0 colon 8001. And we do have to back, back out into our main project directory and we can try that again. And we do have a error here, which is again, always good to demonstrate how to fix those. So it looks like I forgot a comma here. Let's go back up here to our ticker or no, that was in our views file and add that comma between our imports. Try again, run that server. Looks like it's working. Let's go back here, back to our stocks and start by, this time let's do Ford. So F for Ford, submit. Now we're getting the name of the company, the ticker symbol, the description, and the open, high, low, and close price. Now, in order to kind of at the same time explore template inheritance in Django and have the ability to pull in the bootstrap libraries once in a single place and reuse that on other other pages on the website, let's make a file in here called base.html. And I'll go ahead and paste some code in here. And again, for the most part, this looks like normal HTML code except for line 11 here and line four. We'll talk about those lines in a second, but let's first look at the elements here on line six, seven, and eight, which is us pulling in the bootstrap library. So we have the bootstrap CSS library here, the bootstrap JavaScript library, and the Ajax jQuery library on line seven. And like I said, this is our base.html file, which we can reuse on other pages through template inheritance with Django. And that functionality is possible thanks to these blocks that we have here. So we have a block for content, which is empty right now. You have the start of the block here and then nothing in the block and then the end of the block here. And then the same thing up here for the title, start of the block, nothing in it and the end of the block. So we're never actually gonna call or use this base.html file. It's just gonna be just that, the base of our other HTML files. So let me show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and save this file. And what we're gonna do is let's open up, um, let's open up the index.html file, which we had from before. And instead of having a header here, like we do in a body, let's go ahead and extend the base.html file. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste that code right here. And that's all we have to do to um, inherit some of those properties. Now, for each one of those blocks that we were talking about, let's go ahead and enter them. So we can add a block for the title and the title, which will be inserted into the base.html file is going to be home. So that's gonna show up between the title tags on the on the, the base.html page. And now for the content block, we can do the same thing. Start a block 
content up here and then we'll close out the block content down here. So you can see that instead of having those HTML elements on every page, we're simply just extending the base file and as appropriate, entering the information where we need it to show up like in the title and in the content section. So we'll save that and we'll do the exact same thing for the, uh, the ticker.html. So we'll get rid of the header and the body and pretty much everything except for the actual content of the page. And we'll go back up to the top here and do the same type of thing. So we'll extend the base.html at the very first line and then we'll do a block title for the homepage, um, or for, I'm sorry, not for the homepage, for the title. And in here, we're gonna use a dynamic value, the ticker name, which we did have down here defined before. So that's just gonna show up as the title of the page. And then um, let's go ahead and add the content block, just like we did on the index.html page. So we'll do that opening block tag here. And then down at the very last line, we can end the block right here. So if that all makes sense, let's just take one last look at base.html. Um, we'll be able to include all these libraries within the index file and the ticker file because we're extending the base file. So let's go ahead and see what happens. Let's see what we can see when we test out this web application. So. Let's do, uh, let's back out into our main directory here, do a Python manage pi run server 0.0.0.0 colon 8001. Enter, oops, we have to use Python 3, not, not Python. That's why you see that error. And let's go to our web browser, go to our stocks page here, refresh, and you'll see that it looks a little bit different than last time but we're not actually using the bootstrap library yet. We still have those plain old HTML elements. So that's where the bootstrap library actually comes into the picture. So let's go ahead and utilize some of those bootstrap elements to make things look a little bit nicer. And we can do that by going into our index.html page, let's start there. And let's wrap our form in a container that's centered so we can these are um, these are bootstrap classes CSS classes that we can tap into and we'll close our div tag down here and you'll see what that looks like in a second but before we test it out let's do something in the ticker.html file as well and uh, yeah let's go ahead and wrap that in the same type of container that's centered and instead of Let's finish that. And instead of um, just listing these out as, you know, just paragraph elements, let's make a table down here. So let's remove these guys. And I'm gonna use my cheat sheet over here to copy those open, high, low, close prices and paste them in as a table. Um, formatting's off just a tad here. So let's make that look nice. So we have a table here that's also centered. We're using the bootstrap table class and uh, the, each row here has two table data elements. So we have open and then the actual value, just the same as before, the, the price context that we're passing in from our views file for open, high, low, and close. And there's one other element, one other change that I wanted to add here just to make it a little bit more descriptive. So under the description, let's go ahead and add uh, a header for element that says today's price data for this ticker. So that looks good. We are um, now utilizing those bootstrap elements. So let's go ahead and start up our server again. And we can do python3 manage.py run server at that port. And of course we have to go back down to our project root and try it again. So our server's running. Let's go back to our main stocks page and we are centered now. So we are in the middle of the page like we expected it to be. Let's type in a ticker, Apple, hit submit. And that looks a lot better right away. So we have everything centered, the description centered, today's price data for Apple. We have a table down here, 
open, high, low, close, and the prices, which show up as uh, with dollar signs. And, you know, they're mostly formatted. This could probably use a zero after the four, but everything looks really nice. Let's try something else. Let's try Google. And same type of thing that pulls in that price data. Again, we could probably use, since these are really large numbers, there is a uh, bootstrap uh, elements and things that you can pull in to add commas every three wrote, like, you know, for, for currency and all that. Um, but for the most part, this looks good. I think the one thing I would want to change is the, this page, just to spice it up a little bit more. So let's go back out of this and edit the stocks.index.html page. Let's just make it a little bit clear, more clear to the user what they should do on this page. So um, I'm going to paste in some, just a simple prompt to the user to enter a stock symbol. That'll be a nice big header one element. And let's just see what that looks like. So we'll, we got the server running, refresh the page, much better. Enter a stock symbol, um, which one? We'll try forward this time, submit and there's all the data for Ford. So that's it for this video. As you can see, it wasn't too hard to pull in those bootstrap libraries, and it was a heck of a lot easier to use Django's template inheritance as opposed to importing those libraries on every single HTML page. And as you can imagine, with a larger website, that would just be ridiculous. So um, I hope you learned something, and if that is the case, please give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you guys in the next one.